Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Godey. And I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman. I'm a geriatric specialist in psychiatry. And I'm a neuropsychologist, and I specialize in aging. We're experts in dementia care, and we're here to provide you some information and answer some questions that we hear very commonly about dementia and other issues in aging. So Dr. Leatherman, let me ask you this question. Can you enlighten us on what is hospice or what some people will call what is palliative care? Can you tell us about that? Hospice is part of palliative care and let's just stick with hospice now. Um, hospice is a movement that grew out of the cancer care um, uh, medical model. When people realized that someone had exhausted all of the options for treatment of the cancer, um, that there was nothing left, they were terminal, yet they would have medical crises, for example, as part of the dying process in cancer, they might have renal failure, kidneys shut down or something, they would be rushed to the hospital and be treated in the intensive care unit but they were dying, and, and this was very disruptive to families, so the idea of dying at home in peace. So it was, it was first for terminal medical illnesses, and later on was expanded to Alzheimer's and dementia. And so hospice is a model where the, the primary illness, in this case dementia, is not treated. And in some hospice models, uh, other medical conditions, for example, heart disease that the, that the person may be having, an infection, may not be treated because the idea is comfort until the end of life. And so the only medical interventions are based on comfort, not trying to slow the disease process or treat it. There is inpatient hospice and outpatient hospice. So you can go to a hospice place where you are are in their facility and, and be taken care of, or hospice will come to you. They can come to the assisted living, to the nursing home, to your home. Um, and there are special doctors uh, in hospice. They take over, usually take over the care of the dying person from the previous doctors. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. So how would someone get into that hospice system? You mentioned a different doctor may be involved. What, how, how does a family or how does a person know what is that process of getting into hospice? Well, the process is not hard. The family can just call hospice and say, we think that, that it's time. A doctor can refer. Ultimately, the doctor does have to sign over care to the hospice, but um, Although, I do, in some cases, at least uh, here in our area, the primary care physician can remain on, yes. on the, on the t part of the team if they feel comfortable working with that hospice team. That's but, true. But typically, you're right, mm -hmm. it's, it's a different doctor. Yeah, there's sort of, and I'm not going to go into the legal regulations and things that have to happen. I'm just kind of giving you an overview of what typically happens. So if you have questions, be sure and ask the hospice provider or your own uh, physician exactly how the details are going to work. I, I want to just be kind of broad with it. Right. Um, so someone is referred for hospice, and a hospice uh, team or evaluator will come out um, and evaluate the, the ill person to see if they qualify under all the Medicare or Medicaid guidelines and regulations um, because, because there are certain um, ways that you have to qualify. The most, most central being that it's a terminal illness. But I have to kind of say that, uh, and, and we're going to have another uh, video on hospice, so we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Remember, as soon as you are born, you have a terminal illness. You're going to die. Uh, the question is, how fast is that happening, and, and how imminent is it? But someone has to have a terminal illness. A common misconception is that there has to be the expectation of six months or fewer to live. That is actually looser than it was originally when hospice was just the cancer model. And, and as I understand it, uh, there are some uh, 
rules or, or guidelines in terms of who qualifies for hospice and that uh, those can be extended after six months. Right. And so it's not, uh, we can't really predict the date someone is going to die. So uh, that's just a general guideline. But there are some there are some rules and regulations about how to whether you qualify for hospice and you don't have to stay in hospice. So, uh, but it uh, it can be a, a helpful model to use in care. You know, another common misconception about hospice is that uh, my loved one is having intractable pain, um, and it might be pain from uh, spinal stenosis or from uh, arthritis, arthritis, a- any number of things. Intractable pain. And so the only way to manage the pain is with hospice. Again, that's kind of mixing up the old model with chronic and severe cancer pain, which can be unimaginably Mm -hmm. horrible. And so hospice was always very good at giving and and taking care of that pain um, without trying to re-cure the cancer. But that does not mean that the only way to manage pain in the face of dementia is is with hospice. Other physicians and other uh, modalities can be used to treat pain. You don't have to have hospice to to give pain medications. So that's a little bit of an overview of hospice. Um, It uh, can be useful. It's certainly something to talk about your doctor or if, if you're in a facility um, may ask that you talk to hospice or get acquainted with hospice, which doesn't necessarily mean that they want you to do it right now, but you might want to know what resources are out there. And to be able to plan ahead. To plan ahead. And we'll talk some more about it next time. For more answers to questions like these, our book, The Insider's Guide to Dementia Care, is available at Amazon.com.